Hey guys, my name is Kodiak, Raid Leader for Exile Power, and today we are going to build the perfect raid. I've got some tips, I've got some tricks, and basically some advice for all of you guys, no matter what your skill level is, on how you can optimize your raid team to push content and progress the furthest that your team is capable of doing. Now let's start with some overarching themes here, some things that I think about on a daily basis, and some things that I think you guys should think about when you're building a team. Now, raid comps are like symphonies. Every single one is different, and every single one have, has its strengths and its weaknesses. And the key to being a good raid leader and building the perfect raid is understanding how your team functions. Healers, DPS, and tanks, they all need to be symbiotic. They all have to work together. And that's so true when we're talking about the healers and the tanks. Now, talking about Exile Power for a second here, our tank healing comp is as follows. We have Revorn, which is a Death Knight tank, and Shao Kahn, which is a Protection Warrior tank. Now, those are two plate tanks, and they communicate extremely well together. And at the end of the day, that is really what matters the most, is the communication and the ability for the tanks to work together. Because there's only two of them, that relationship is so important to building a strong team, and it really is the rock on which the team is built upon. Now, you can really get into it and look at uh, tanks based on what their, their armor spec is. So you have leather tanks and you have plate tanks. Now, the plate tanks being warriors, DKs, and paladins, while the leather tanks being druids, uh, demon hunters, and Monks, there we go, almost blanked there for a second. Now, the thing that you want to optimize when it comes to tanks is building a tank team that takes uh, similar types of, d of damage, so smooth damage or at least alternating. You never want tanks that take spiky damage to be together. Uh, I'm thinking the ha uh, Vengeance Demon Hunter, the um, Blood DK, and the potentially the Brewmaster Monk, depending on how you play it. Now, the Blood DK and the Guardian Druid take high amounts of damage, but rely on self-healing. So having those two classes together, it's not bad, but they do have to be paired together and played well. When you have tanks like the Protection Paladin and the Protection Warrior and the Guardian Druid, um, you're looking at a much smoother tank composition, a much smoother tank situation. Double stacking tanks usually doesn't work too well, mainly because the lack of flexibility, you know, a tank toolkit is what it is and, and only having one toolkit is never the most optimized situation but it will work in some situations for instance a double prot warrior tank is not a terrible thing a double guardian druid tank situation is not a terrible thing is it the best no but the key to good tanks is the click the ability to communicate effectively and work as a team now our tanks are pretty self-sufficient, and that's something that I would definitely push your tanks to be, self-sufficient. A raid leader can work on the tanks. I very rarely say something to the tanks unless there's a glaring error or there's something that in, in the strategy overall that I want to ch change. But the tanks as a unit need to be self-sufficient. They need to communicate together and determine what's going to be the best way for them to approach each fight. And that really is the key to a good tank team. Moving over to the healers now, a good healing team is usually led by one member of that healing team. That member, whether it be the raid leader or a healing officer, will designate cooldowns, will designate the focus of each of the healers. And luckily, each of the healers brings its own toolkit to the table. And we will talk about stacked classes later, which classes I think you could stack in a raid if you want to. Um, and there is a healer in there that I would recommend. But overall, you want a diversified healing pool. When you have an issue with single target healing or when you have an issue with raid AoE healing, you want to focus on finding that missing puzzle piece and putting it into your raid. Like I said, it's like a symphony. If you're missing your brass section, you want to go out and find brass players because healing in this expansion is probably the most balanced it has ever been at least at this point 7.1 it has been so so consistent and i'm very excited for that because there are healers that have toolkits that are flexible there are healers that excel at certain things and there are healers that really bring um unique aspects to the table 
But the key to that is your healing team has to click four, five, um, potentially three, depending on what kind of content you're doing and, and how big your raid size is. Those healers need to be another self-sufficient unit. Your raid leader can step in, build upon the healing team, um, offer ideas, suggestions, and change a strat if that's part of the deal. But a healing team needs to be largely focused on their assignments, their roles within the team. Usually it comes from a healing officer, but again, diversify, spread the wealth, and rely on each other to communicate what needs to be fixed. If there's an issue with AoE healing, if there's an issue with tank healing, adjust and communicate. That is the key to a good healing and tank team. Now, that's not to say that DPS is not as important, but honestly, there are many DPS classes that get through the game, get through rage just fine, not really communicating with the rest of the team and just doing what they have to do. Think of it as um, your DPS as soldiers. They show up, they do what they have to do, they defeat the enemy, and they go home. And that really is the case. There are situations, depending on a fight, where a DPS needs to step up into a defensive role or an offensive role or a utility role, but Overall, it's your healers and your tanks, which are the foundation of your team. Even though they are the uh, lesser in terms of numbers, they are the foundation of a good team. And they have to be, um, they have to click. They have to work as a unit. And if you don't have them working as a unit, you're going to have a big problem, regardless if you have the best DPS in the world. It comes down to your healers and tanks working in tandem to accomplish a goal. Now, Moving away from um, healers, DPS, and tanks for a second, your officers. Your officers in a, a perfect raid need to lead by example. And this comes down to some of the basics. Potions, flasks, enchants, etc. If they say uh, to bring that stuff and to, and to use that stuff, they sure as hell better have that stuff on their characters as well. Now, I think that um, a guild, if they can, should provide some of that for their team members because... Look, not everybody has every second of the day to farm and, and to go out into the world and provide for themselves, but that is up to your team. In my opinion, the perfect raid is consistently providing for the team and playing to their maximum capacity. That means potions, flasks, enchants, etc. And that changed drastically with the addition of the Blood of Sargeras vendor. Mats kind of went down, so things got a little bit more... Um, flat in terms of the market and the potion of prolonged power really added another level to that allowing us to pre-pot and pot on every fight flasks are still relatively expensive but doable and obviously enchant mats are dirt cheap now with all of the um, epic crystals getting put into the market so officers lead by example whether it be being prepared for a raid whether it be you know living and dying by your sword, what you say is going to go. So lead by example, be a role model for your team. Now, the next bit of advice here, guys, is about stacking classes. And if you've been privy to any of the world first chases, you'll notice that in um, Legion, there's probably the biggest stacking class uh, situation we've ever seen was Shadow Priests. Now, Shadow Priests have a very high skill cap, and that comes down to playing the class well. They can perform very well, or they can perform very terribly. Now, stacking classes is okay when it's done correctly, and at the end of the video, we'll talk about which classes you can stack. But, in a raid situation, you're going to want to, for the most part, diversify. Keep your team balanced across the board. Strong single target burst, strong single target sustained, strong AoE, strong AoE burst. You want to keep all of that stuff sustained. Healing, tanks, DPS, diversify. It's like a symphony. You want to have a, uh, an ensemble that's filled with unique and diversified raiders. Now, that's the key. Diversify and conquer. The more flexibility you have in a raid situation, the more you're going to accomplish, whether that be raid utilities such as a roar or a Gorfiend's grasp or a shout or darkness, um, you're going to see better performance, especially if your raid leader is key to using those abilities at the proper time and really finding those moments where that one Gorfiend's grasp or that one shout is going to push your team to the next level. And this comes down to the next thing, identifying problems that you do have, and you have to identify them as they're happening. If you see a problem, so does everybody else. So don't get hung up with, okay, well, let's do this for now, we'll do a couple hours of this, and then we'll go back and look at it. No, live log, have your information up, always be identifying problems as they're happening and adjust on the fly. A good raid, a perfect raid, 
will adjust on the fly, make adjustments, pull the boss again, make adjustments, pull the boss again. The key is finding that balance between making adjustments that will push your team to the next step and making those uh, snap decisions within the fight that are going to push your team forward. But the key too is to pull the boss. You have to continue to pull. You can't sit around for hours on end and, and talk about fights. There's only so much that you can do by talking. You have to keep pulling. If you look at some of the best guilds in the world, you'll notice that their pull times and their pull counts for a night are very high and that's because they pull a boss adjust pull a boss adjust and i highly recommend that for your team the perfect raid pulls the boss a lot identifies problems as they're happening and fixes them on the fly and obviously you want to optimize that utility when possible if you have a highly utility raid uh, composition if you will uh, you want to make sure you're utilizing them i don't want to make my two shamans have wind burst if we're not going to use them i don't want to make you know i'm not going to use roar whenever i want from one of my feral or guardian druids i'm going to use it when we need it and that's the key understanding what you have available in your raid and capitalizing on it now exorcist raid tools is a great toolkit for a raid leader it shows you all well it does a ton of things but one of the things that it does is it shows you all of your raid utility your raid cooldowns and you can set it up to show all of the raid wide stuff all of the uh, single target elements whatever you want to see from it you can put on your screen now if you've watched any of my videos in a raid setting you'll notice that i have it in the kind of upper left hand right next to my logs you can see which cooldowns are available from my team and i will always make sure when we're working on a progression fight to point out when i want something when i need a darkness when i want to shout and then after that when you're on farm content i leave it up to the raider to make sure that they're hitting their cooldowns in the proper place so that's that's the thing in a perfect raid you're optimizing your utility and honestly guys the last bit of overarching advice here is be prepared to adapt a good raid team a perfect raid team will adapt and adjust on the fly after every single pull and sometimes within the pull a team needs to be able to say, okay, X, Y, and Z is going on, so I need to adjust right now to make sure that we kill the boss and be, move on and, and hit the next step of progression, whatever that may be, whether it be the next phase of a progression boss or downing a boss entirely. So just some little bit of advice for you guys. Let's move on to the next session where we're going to break down every single class and spec in the game based on some overarching themes i am not a master of every class i don't expect any raid leader other than some of the best raid leaders and players in the game to understand how to play every single class but a raid leader should have a basic knowledge of what classes do well and a lot of that comes through experiencing the class talking to your raiders the raiders are the best source of information that you could possibly have looking at what they do well looking at what they don't do well and adjusting your comp and your strategy based on what's available. So we're gonna go down the line here. Feel free to, you know, don't take my word for the gospel. I believe that this is what these classes and specs do well based on what I've seen in an encounter. Things will change. And please, if you do disagree with me or you think I've missed something that people really need to hear, put it in the comments. I Again, this is just my opinion. I am not the end-all be-all when it comes to raid leading and understanding every class. I play the few classes that I play, and I know these classes through working with them in a raid environment. So, and let's break it down. All right, so first up, we have the DK. Let's talk about the DPS specs here. We have Frost and Unholy. Both are performing decently well right now, with Frost pulling ahead as the gear continues to ramp up. Frost is an easy-to-play spec. It performs well in the raid. It's got low mobility and a strong single-target grip. Unholy is a strong sustained and burst AoE DPS. It's got the same low mobility, the same single target grip. Both DPS specs are doing decently in the raids in Emerald Nightmare and TOV right now, with Frost pulling ahead based on the gear. And then shifting over to the tank, we have a decent tank with high self-healing, which means it's going to be taking a little bit more damage, but it is allowed to be flexible through the use of its self-healing abilities. Same low mobility that we saw in the Frost and the Unholy DK, and it's got a very strong raid utility in Gorefiend's Grasp. 
Next up, we have the Demon Hunter. One DPS spec and one tank spec. Let's start with the DPS spec. It is a very strong single target AoE DPS spec, and that's because it can seamlessly flow between single target and AoE damage based on its toolkit. It is the most mobile DPS class in the game. The ability to get around a raid space is incredible, and it does have a decently strong raid CD in Darkness. Now, Darkness is proc dependent, but can be very, very vital in saving your team in a high damage situation. Moving over to the Vengeance tank, again, very highly mobile tank. It does have strong damage output, um, and it's strong in the right hands. It requires active mitigation management, and it is another self-healing class. So it will be taking some damage, but in the right hands, it can be a very strong spec. Next up, we have the Druid. The Druid has four specs, two of which are DPS, one tank, one healer. Let's start with the DPS. Balance is a strong single target and multi target DPS through the use of multi dotting. It is a ramp up, ramp down DPS with high burst windows when abilities line up, and it is a very mobile spec. Now, Balance is performing very well right now. Definitely a class you want to have around in the raid. Uh, do I recommend stacking it? Sure, one or two is not a bad thing. Do I recommend five? or six absolutely not but you're going to see decent output from the balanced druid moving over to the feral druid a class that you rarely see in raids and that's because it is a strong single target two to three target cleave spec but it does have virtually no aoe and it's got some decent cleave with the use of dots and bleeds but at the end of the day it is a very high skill cap class not because it's challenging but because there's a lot of management that goes into it and if you're not a, a person that likes or um, weak auras or add-ons it is a very challenging class to play. Now it is extremely mobile, and it's got a very strong utility in your roar, which increases the movement speed of everybody in your raid, but you don't see too many of them in your raid. Again, not a class I would recommend stacking, but a decent um, class to have around if you have a very strong player. Next, moving on to the Resto Druid, strong raid healer, probably one of the best in the game right now. It can be optimized to basically take on any type of fight, and that's through the use of talents. It's very good uh, raid healer as its core, and it, it can be talented to be a decent tank healer. It's not the best tank healer in the game, but it is a solid addition to any team. It's a highly mobile uh, spec. It's a highly mobile healer, and that's definitely something you want to have around. And finally, we have the Guardian Druid, which is by far my favorite type of tank right now in the game, and that's just my personal preference. It's a strong hybrid tank that can handle magic and physical damage. It's got decent CDs, I mean, four or five CDs because of the stacking nature of them. Iron Fur and Mark of Ursoc, definitely, I mean, just such a great toolkit for taking um, any type of damage. Now, it is a high damage taking class because it relies on self-healing, um, but the use of cooldowns definitely help mitigate some of that damage. And again, a decently mobile tank with a very strong utility in the use of Roar, which if talented can be brought down to one minute, which is massive. Six minute fight, seven minute fight, you're talking about five or six Roars if played correctly that are really going to optimize your team. Next we have the Hunter, my baby, the Marksmanship Hunter, one of the best classes in the game because of the way that it's built. Now it's not the most fun um, to play at the moment, but it is a very strong single target class and it's very mobile. Still the same mobility that was around in WAD, obviously we can't cast aim shot um, without standing still, but that's part of the deal now. And it does cleave passively, and this is a reason why people like bringing it to the raid. Through the talent system with Sidewinders and um, Patient Sniper, you're going to see a lot of Hunters do well on multi-target fights and single-target fights, and that's just the way that the class is built right now. It doesn't really have any raid utility. It's got something in the use of Binding Shot, but overall, it's just a strong DPS spec that everybody should have in their raid, at least one, if not two. Next, let's look at Survival. Now, Blizzard took a swing at Survival. It is underperforming, and it does have strong single target, but it's at the expense of AoE, and these are in Windows of Burst. Now, it's not really doing that well. It is one of the lowest DPS classes in the game right now. If you want to bring one to your raid, that is completely up to you. It does have some utility within the traps and decent mobility, um, but again, an underperforming DPS class. Definitely don't recommend stacking it. If you want one, that's great. Hopefully, you have it in the hands of somebody that can really do some damage with it.
And finally, we have Beast Mastery Hunter. Now, the Beast Master Hunter is okay in strong cleave situations. Um, not so great single target. It is all pretty sustained damage, um, and there's virtually no raid utility. So, again, a decent DPS class, not something that you want if you're on the cutting edge. You're going to want to be playing Marksmanship, which is very strong in this, in, for the Hunter. Moving on, we have the Mage. Now, Frost, Arcane, and Fire are constantly in flux, and this is probably going to change four or five times depending on what time you're watching this video. The Frost Mage is quickly becoming one of the strongest single target and sustained specs. It is predictable damage. You know what you're going to get with a Frost Mage, especially in the right hands. It is very good at priority target switching now, which is great, especially if you are in an ad fight. And um, with TOV and who knows in Nighthold, there may be some high priority target switching that needs to go on. Frost Mage is something that's really going to shine. It does have strong utility in the use of slows, um, but not always prevalent in raid situations. And it's a highly mobile class you know the mage blinks and all sorts of craziness no raid utility but strong um, self utility if you will next up we have the arcane mage which is a strong dps class highly mobile and it does have a little bit of a ramp up time but it is good at priority target switching very similar to the frost mage uh, but the frost mage just does everything just a little bit better at this point who knows maybe a night hold arcane will be the thing to play and finally, we have the Fire Mage, which really started off strong. It has strong burst, sustain, and cleave DPS. It's a highly mobile spec, um, but as the gear has come out, Fire and Frost and Arcane all seem to be in flux with most people playing either Fire or Frost, depending on the fight. High cleave fights, you're going to be playing Fire, and single target sustain fights, you're going to be playing Frost. So that's what it seems like, at least. Next up, we have the Monk, and the Monk has taken on a fantastic shape in Legion. The Windwalker Monk is a strong priority DPS spec. It's got strong AoE capabilities. It's extremely mobile. And it's a smooth rotation that's really adaptable for AoE situations. And in the right hands, it's going to do a lot of damage. I would definitely recommend bringing one to your raid. We've been trying to get one in the Exile Power Raid for some time now. It is doing very well. Um, it is in the mid-high part of the... Um, rankings at the moment and definitely something you want to have around. Next up we have the Beast, uh, not Beast Mastery, what am I talking about? The Brewmaster Monk. Um, it's a highly mobile tank but it is a high skill cap tank. If you don't know the way that a Brewmaster Monk plays, it requires some serious um, work and some serious, serious skill to play correctly. And it, and it will and it can take smooth damage if played correctly. But no raid utility the mobility makes it a strong tank, and the smooth damage, if played correctly, makes it a strong tank, but it has to be in the right hands, and there is a relationship between the Brewmaster Monk and the healers that really needs to coalesce. If you want to know more about the Brewmaster Monk, I highly recommend getting on the Monk Discord, checking out the Brewmaster section. There are some of the best Brewmaster Monks in that channel trying to figure out how to play it better, because it is a high skill cap tank, one of the highest skill caps in the game, if not the highest right now, um, but in the right hands, just an incredible, incredible tank. And then finally, we have the Mistwalker Monk, a strong adaptable healer, one of the best jack of all trades when talented in the right direction. It can swing to single target or raid healing with an amazingly strong CD and revival and obviously the same high mobility that all monks bring to the table. Next, we have Paladins, and we'll start with the Rep Paladin. It is in the mid-high range for single target DPS. It's got average cleave and AoE, um, but the utility of Blessing of Might, which it brings to the raid, is really, really strong. Put that on three of your best players, and man, you're going to see some numbers that are just absolutely fantastic. It's a decent DPS to bring to the raids. I wouldn't recommend stacking them too much, maybe one or two, um, but definitely something you want to have around if possible. Next, we have the Holy Paladin, which is by far the strongest tank single target healer in the game. Decently mobile, with a strong CD and aura mastery, plus the Chosen Aura, depending on the fight. A great healer to have in your back pocket, especially if your tank team is a little weaker and you have a strong Holy Paladin, you're going to be doing just fine. The, the Holy Paladin took on a new persona, still a strong tank healer, which is what it was in Warlords of Draenor, but took on a new persona, a new play style in Legion, which, I mean, if you put it in the right hands, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And finally, we have the Prop Pally, which is a straightforward tank, smooth damage because of the shield block and all that stuff, and it's a strong tank because of its CDs. It's got some decent CDs, it knows how to mitigate damage, one of the most basic tanks in the game. Highly recommend it for anybody that's looking to getting into tanking. Anybody can pick it up, do it well, obviously a little research goes into playing it well. Next up, we have the Priest, which is so interesting, this expansion pack, because the Shadow Priest in the right hands 
is a phenom, an absolute phenom. If, if any of you guys have watched public videos, you'll know that he is just a beast with the Shadow uh, Priest. I mean, he's one of the best in the game right now. 98, 99% parses on pretty much every fight that we do on Mythic Progression. It's a strong single target and multi-target spec, but it is an extremely high skill cap. Surrender to Madness is just insane. It's so much fun to play, but if you're playing it and you're not playing it well, you are going to suffer um, massively. So if you are a Shadow Priest or looking to be a Shadow Priest, check out Public's videos. It's up on the screen right now. Click on that bring you right to it again the shadow priest strong class in the right hands it does not have mobility though a little bit of suffering there not so much in the raid utility department but i mean just one of the strongest dps classes in the right hands right now moving on to the the priest healing specs we'll start with holy which is a strong strong raid healer it's got no major defensive cooldowns but it's got some strong healing cds it's all about output with the holy priest and raid output it's got some average mobility i mean nothing special and, and again just strong healing cds healing cds that you definitely want to have in the raid um it is okay to stack a holy priest because it's just about output um it, a lot of people play the holy priest it's something that a lot of people and you know find as kind of the vanilla healer in legion and that's okay because then you have the disc priest and the disc priest is best played by the right person it is a high skill cap healing class it does amazing if not the best burst healing within windows of setup now it it, it has to be set up um if you've ever in, ever interested in looking at a disc priest i would highly recommend checking out zade finn who is our disc priest on our team his parses are incredible he's an incredible healer um and, and it's cool because the disc priest if you guys don't know does dps it's the highest dps of any healer and through its dps it heals so again it, it's got to be in the right hands it's all about timing it's all about setting up your heals it's got a great defensive cooldown in the bubble which has come in handy so many times on fights like ursoc and elareth um, it, it's just an amazing cd but it does require timing and setup it does have a strong tank cd in the form of pain sup so again you know if you have a, a good disc priest around do not lose them they will become invaluable i think as the expansion goes on next we have the rogue the assassination rogue is a strong consistent single target and two to three target cleave it's got virtually no aoe which kind of sucks because it does all of its dps through bleeds um it, it's got some cc utility which is not great in raids but it does have a strong defensive toolkit which is really the crux of why you need a rogue in your raid it's got amazing mobility and amazing defensive um capability so you want to have a rogue in your raid subtlety is doing just fine it's a strong single target two to three target cleave burst dps it's got that same strong defensive toolkit high mobility uh, and it does have the weakest aoe um, of these three because of its it, it sacrifices its single target to do aoe damage it's not that great because really the sub rogue is all about the strong single target and it does scale very well with gear so if you're getting that gear um, you'll see some improvements on the subtlety rogue and finally, we have the Outlaw Rogue. It is the most effective rogue spec. It's a jack of all trades. It can do everything extremely well. Strong single target and AoE DPS. It's got that strong defensive toolkit we've been talking about. The high mobility that we've been talking about. But the DPS varies based on RNG. Now, we all know about Roll the Bones. And the way that Roll the Bones works is all based on the random number generator. And if you unfortunately fall victim to the rng gods you will see your dps suffer but again it is flexible it's a jack of all trades worth having one if not two in your raid all right next up we have the shamans we'll start with the two dps specs here enhancement shamans is one of the strongest single target um, dps specs in the game right now it does well in aoe situations when needed um, it's just it's performing so well right now kelso one of our enhancement shamans is just a phenom with it it it's just playing so well right now the numbers on the board do not lie it does have some utility in the wind burst talent if you take it our shamans refuse to take it but that's okay uh, and it's got decent mobility the elemental shaman is a mid-pack dps it's a flexible dps it can do single target it can do aoe um, it can priority switch if need be same it's got the wind burst speed utility which you can re request your shamans to take uh, if you don't have a guardian druid or a feral druid around same average mobility um i think it lacks the spirit walk talent if i remember correctly um spirit walk ability i should say so it's just got ghost wolf so it's a decent um mobility class but not the best finally we have the resto shaman now it is a flexible raid healer and it's best when 
your raid team is clumped. It always has been, it always will be. And unfortunately, it starts to fall off really quick when your raid is spread out. On a fight like Nithendra, the Resto Shaman struggles. It is one of the stronger um, healing CD classes and specs because of Spirit Link, because of Healing Tide, Cloudburst. I mean, just great raid CDs. And it's got average mobility with Ghost Wolf. Moving on to the Warlocks, we have three DPS specs. All of them um, do something a little different. All of them right now are pretty much middle of the board. Affliction is a strong AoE cleave spec because of multi-dotting. It's got terrible um, single target ramp DPS. It's got average to high mobility. It's got some talent flexibility. And it's got decent raid utility through Gateway, which all of the specs have. Um, it's simming well because of... Oh, sorry, it's ranking well, I should say, because of its AoE. Um, that is it. It's not a strong single target spec. Bringing one to your raid is only going to um, set you back, I think. That's just my personal opinion. Affliction Warlocks on the board right now are performing well, but really in a raid environment, it, it, Affliction is not that great. Looking at Destro, it is a flexible DPS, excels at two target cleave, so any two target fights, you know they're going Destro. Um, it's a high priority DPS, or it can switch on a dime and do very well. It's not great in AoE situations, it does not have a toolkit for that, and it's got um, decent mobility, uh, decent to low mobility. Finally, we have the Demo Lock, which is sustained single target DPS in periods of burst AoE damage. It is the strongest single target spec, um, but it does have weak sustained AoE. It's got decent high priority DPS. I mean, it is what it is. All three of the Warlock specs are in flux right now. I mean, they all do what they do. They don't all do it great, but in the right hands, a Warlock can be played rather well. And finally, we have the Warrior. Warrior has two DPS specs, one um, tank spec. We'll start with the two DPS specs. Fury, underperforming. It does have high burst DPS potential, strong cleave, uh, and it can be a decent priority DPSer, but it's dependent on procs. Um, it's just underperforming right now, guys. There's no two ways to skin it. Uh, it's got high mobility, so that's a thing for it. But if you want to play a warrior, you want to play arms. It is the strongest single target spec. It's got burst capabilities. It's got priority capabilities. And it is a strong AoE burst DPS or within reason. It's, it's limited by its cooldowns, which is shitty, but it does work when needed. Uh, it's dependent on procs and CDs. That's the way the class is built right now. It's got raid utility with the shout, which is great. It definitely helps out the healers. Um, and it's a highly mobile class. We have one in our raid right now, Pronate. He's great. You guys have seen him in his video, and he kills it. And the Arms Warrior is strong when played well. Finally, we have the Protection Warrior, another strong, sturdy tank. It's got high mobility, strong multi-target tank. You got a lot of ads that are coming out. That is the tank you want there, right next to the Guardian Druid, because it can really round up all of those ads. Uh, it's a blocking tank, so you're going to see smooth and sustained damage coming from the Protection Warrior. Ignore Pain is not as strong as it used to be, but is still an amazing CD. The Prot Warrior, again, another easy-to-play tank. If you're new to the game and want to play a tank, that is the one you want to play. So overall, guys, that is my output on all of the different classes. Very basic level. If you want to dive into any specific class, I highly recommend hopping in the Discord channel for that class and start figuring out what that class does well and how you can play it better. Now, a few more things before we wrap up this video. I talked about stacking classes. Now, at, at this point in 7.1, stacking classes is a dangerous game. Now, there are some classes that you can stack. Enhancement Shaman is performing very well right now. I would say two to three in a raid is not a bad thing, especially if you're low on melee DPS and you want to get a couple in there. They're not bringing much utility to the raid, but they're giving you consistent, strong DPS. Shadow Priest. Now, I warn you, Shadow Priests need to be played well to stack them. So if you have um, two or three Shadow Priests that are underperforming, I would say figure out a way to either change them off Shadow Priest uh, or figure what the heck they need to do right. Because the Shadow Priest in the right hands, like Public, is going to perform so well on every single fight. And that's really amazing. Especially if you can get two or three of them that are just on par um, and just, just nailing it. Next, we have the Marksmanship Hunter. Again, not the most fun class to play right now, but is performing well. Um, it has that passive cleave I was talking about, so it does well in an AoE and a single target situation. It's a high priority um, DPS, so it can switch on a dime and not lose a single bit of DPS. And it's all about the setup with the Marksmanship Hunter, lining up your shots, making sure you're hitting your vulnerable windows. So that is a decent class to stack. And from the healers, 
you can stack the Resto Druid, you can stack the Mistweaver Monk. Um, I mean, it, it really doesn't matter too much. The Resto Druid, because of the raid healing capabilities. Um, I'm not saying you should fill your raid with four or five Resto Druids, but two Resto Druids or two Holy Priests are really going to, you're going to see a lot of output from them. And that's what it's about. It's about the output. Now, the Resto Druid gets a slight edge, in my opinion, because of the way that it heals through HOTS heals over time so stacking two resto druids you're really going to see that your raid throughput your raid healing throughput which is the overall healing to your raid team is it's going to be higher and that's a good thing that's okay and guys here's the truth the perfect raid right that's the title of this video the perfect raid comes down to what you need what your team needs you have to be tuned in you have to be understanding of what your team does well and what your team doesn't do well and make adjustments headhunt for those classes and specs that you need and make sure make sure you are recruiting the player not the class now the player is what matters a good player in a good guild is going to do well no matter what they're playing i, I cannot tell you enough how many times we've recruited a class and not the player and we've, we've had that player peter out because they weren't the right person for the guild. They weren't the right player for the environment that we have. And you have to be true to what your guild wants. If you're a progressive three-day guild, then you're going to want to find that raider that wants to be progressive three-day. But you want to find the raider. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't look for the classes that you need, but make sure when you're f looking for those classes, you're also looking for the player that's going to bring that next bit, that little thing, that little minutia of... of crystallized nugget of goodness that you need for your team and finally guys you have to push your team to be better you can't just do all of the work you have to put some of it on your team your team has to look at logs your team has to look at videos and understand how to play their class and know what they're doing wrong on each fight know what they're doing well on each fight and push themselves to be at that next level and that's the best advice i can give you guys i mean the perfect raid the perfect raid it's all about what you guys make it, you know? It's all about what you bring to the table, what you, what guys and girls you bring to the table, what raiders you're bringing to the table. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? What is your perfect raid? I mean, there is no correct answer, but please, whatever you guys think about the perfect raid, leave it in the comments below. I want to have a conversation about this and building a team. How do you build your team? Is it better? Is it worse? Um, do you have anything that I missed? Any advice that I missed? Um, let's talk about it. Make sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you're new. My name is Kodiak, we will see you next time for another Exile Power video. Take care.